Hello and welcome to Vector Touch Plus. My name is Martin Verhiniak, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create interactive forms in InDesign CS6. This is another great new feature in InDesign because now we can easily create everything right inside InDesign. We don't have to use Acrobat. In previous versions, we had to design a form in InDesign or maybe in Photoshop and then use Acrobat to add the interactivity. Now in InDesign CS6 we don't have to go to Acrobat, we can do everything right here. We have some new features in the buttons and forms uh, panel which you can find under the window interactive options, so here buttons and forms. And this is the panel you will mainly use uh, for creating interactive forms. Now, as you can see, I already designed something which can serve as a form. And there is nothing interactive on this form at the moment. It's just plain frames and text frames. So I'm going to show you how to create checkboxes, radio buttons, uh, command fields, combo boxes, submit buttons, signature fields. So most of the things that you might use for a form. So let me show you how to design this or how to create this. First of all, whenever you create a nice looking uh, field for the uh, text field, for example, it's always better to create another text frame on top of the graphic frame that you created and turn that into a button or an interactive text field. The reason for that is because sometimes these frames uh, won't work properly. So what I would do is select the type tool and it's also good to have a separate layer for all the interactive elements. So what I usually do is I call my layer uh, the graphic. So you can even divide it into more layers, but this is what I prefer to do and lock it. If I don't want to make any changes to it, I can lock it. And then I can create a separate layer and that can be the interactive elements. And that I won't lock at the moment, of course. So now I'm going to create a text frame. And while you are creating a frame, you can always uh, hold down space to move that frame around in your design. So this will be my text frame, but I need to turn this into a button. The way you can do that is by clicking on this icon here in the buttons and forms panel called convert to button. And then you can choose the type. Uh, that's another great new feature in uh, InDesign CS6 that whenever you turn something into a specific button, you can always change it. So let's just say I turn this into a list box. I can always change it back to something else like a checkbox, for example. But let me just set this to text field. So it's very good that it's flexible. You can always change what the function of an interactive button uh, should be. So this is going to be a text field and it's always good to name your fields. So this is going to be the name. Then you don't have to add any action to it because it already understood that this is a text field where we need information. But what you need uh, most of the time is to choose whether if it's a required field or not. So if it's a required field, you won't be able to submit the form without filling it in. So I'm going to check required. And um, it can be printable as well. So if someone wants to print the form, then all the values added to these fields will be printable, which is great. I'm going to choose that as well. And um, I'm not going to use scrollable at the moment. I'm just going to turn that off. And what I would like to do is to add a description as well. The description will be a little uh, help for whoever hovers over this text field. will be able to see a little uh, pop-up text. And I'm going to just type in here a little bit more information. Please provide your full name. Okay, so that's all I wanted to add for this. Now, because we already created the text field, we can duplicate this and drag it further and uh, I'm going to select the second one and this automatically named uh, differently than the first one. So InDesign knows that we need separate names for them. So as you can see, it's already named name one. But I'm going to call this email. This is the email field. And um, 
I'm going to just type in please provide your email address here and that's also a required field and then we can move along and create checkboxes for this skills section so you can create a frame whatever frame you want to use and you can again convert that to a button and set it to a checkbox and it will automatically add the graphic but you can also use the default or sample buttons provided in InDesign. If you want to find these, you can go to the buttons and forms panel and in the drop down, you can find sample buttons and forms. So that's what you need. And I am going to use this one, the first one. So I just drag it out. And of course, I'm going to make this smaller. So hold down command shift and drag it down until it's small enough to fit it here. So that's one checkbox another one and another one okay and I'm going to select it and go back to the buttons and forms and I'm going to give it a name that's quite important so I'm going to add Photoshop uh, for the next one I'm going to add InDesign and the third one should be called Illustrator once again, this is important because when someone fills this form and send the data to us, we will have a table and these are going to be the columns. So this is the way we can process the whole information. Another thing what you can set for the checkbox is whether they should be already checked or not. You can choose off for them and then it looks like this. And we can set the others as well to off. So the a uh, person will be able to choose whether uh, they have these skills or not and then you have also the option to have set this to uh, required you can add description as well um, and you can even have like selected by default but we don't need to uh, set up more things for this for the level I'm going to use a radio button and uh, I'm going to use a sample radio buttons and probably let's just go with a simple one. I'm going to use this one. So I just drag out a, a version which or a, a radio button sample that has already created. And the good thing with these radio buttons is that they are already um, are in a group. So we will be able to set them up. So the user, whoever fills this in, will be able to select only one of these. So if I go back to the buttons and forms, we can see that all of these are named the same. Uh, so R3, but we can call it level. So let me just type in level for this one as well, level and level. And of course we have to give it a value as well, which you can set at the bottom. So this one is the middleweight designer this one is junior and the one on the top is the art worker so these are the radio buttons and uh, again we can add description we can set whether it's required or not and we can also choose which one should be turned on by default so if we select junior designer of course we can turn off the art worker and so on and so forth I'm going to choose art worker and that's a good one to start with now for the experience I would like to have a combo box once again something we can create from the sample buttons and forms but these are the things you can create from almost anything so here I just drag out this and this is a sample combo box I can delete elements from it so I only need one frame which I'm going to resize okay so that is going to be used for the experience and just to show you I can always add graphic elements to it so I can add like a stroke around it I can set, like, set it up the way the other uh, frames are uh, set up so I can do whatever I want with this but let me just set it up so in the buttons and forms we will have all these elements here first of all I'm going to change the name to experience okay and uh, you can always check that all of your other elements are named properly and yeah so far these are all named properly so let me just go back to the experience combo box and here are the list items 
Now we can remove all of them. I'm just going to remove that was 12 elements and I'm going to add them manually. So the experience can be, let's say one year. I add that and I add another one, two years. And if I press shift enter, it adds it. And then I can type again the next one, three years, shift enter, and then four years plus. So more than four years, shift enter. And we can select which one should be the default selected. So I'm going to select one year. And let's just set this also required. Okay, now for the about you area, I'm going to create another text frame. So I'm going to use the type tool and create a text frame. And here again, we are going to convert this text frame to a button. So I click on convert to button and I'm going to set this to a text field and I set it to multi-line and scrollable. So if, if someone writes an essay, they will be able to scroll down and up. And uh, once again, we can type the description for it, but I won't do anything else with this. And then we just need a signature area. So for that, again, I'm going to create that frame. I can even use the type tool or any of the frame tools. And from this frame, I'm going to create another element, a signature field. And we can of course set this also to required. And then the last thing we need is a submit button. I'm just uh, going to set this text field. I forgot to add the name for this. This is the about field. And uh, this one is experience. Yeah, that's right. So that signature field, we can just call this simply signature. Okay. And now we go back to the sample buttons and we can drag out any of these uh, sample buttons. Let's just go with this one. And uh, I am going to type in on top of this using the type tool. Let's just type in submit and use the same uh, character that I used at the top and set it to white, the color of it. So this is going to be on top of my button. Let's just align it a little bit. Let's have a look. That looks good. And now I just need to select this and set it up. So this is already set to a button What we can call this submit. And we need to add an action. Uh, you can use the action you already have there. Go to URL, but that's not the one what we need. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to add submit form. So click on the little plus sign and choose submit form. And then you can set up uh, how you want to submit the form. You, you can create a URL or you can even use mail to and then type in something. I'm just going to type in info info.com and uh, it can already email uh, the form results to you. So that's all what you need to set up. And now what we need to do is of course, save this form. Let me just save it as a different one like finished. I'm going to call this the finished form. And uh, we can go to file, choose export, and we can set it to an interactive PDF form and then save. And just to make sure that the forms and media are set to include all, that's all what you need to really check. And then we can save it and click on OK. And Acrobat opens up automatically. And as you can see, we have the whole form here already. I can turn off the highlight existing fields because I know where I have these fields. So I can start typing in my name. You can see I can type here. I can type my email. I can choose whether I know Photoshop, InDesign and Illustrator. I can choose my level in design and you can see it automatically switches. We can select how many years of experience we have. We can type something in here. Let me just type in something. I'm going to use InDesign for a longer text. So I'm going to choose type field placeholder text. And I copy this uh, to Acrobat. And just to test the multi-line effect. And yes, we have a little scroll. 
we can go up and down. If I make the frame a little bit uh, narrower, then this scroll would be able to fit inside the frame. And then we can sign here with the uh, digital ID that we have in Acrobat. I don't want to do that. And there's one mistake which I did, and that's uh, the layering of the submit text. That should be on top of a separate layer. So it should be on top of this button here but it still works so with even without the text on it i can still click on it and then it will send the, the form i had some required fields and probably the sign here which i didn't do in this case it won't send the email to me but as you can see we already created an interactive form and it's very easy to go back to indesign and make amends like for me in in this case i would need to move that submit button or the text onto a separate layer and just call this additional text and just drag and drop it onto that layer so you can always test it in in acrobat uh, set it up to your own email and then you can even fill in the form and send it to yourself and see how it looks so that's all what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you find this feature useful and I hope you will join me next time as well here on Vector Touch Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.